The great Maya Angelou said, I've learned that people forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. That is so true, right? I, I see that in marketing too all the time. If you can make uh, your marketing have an emotional connection, it is remembered so much, so much further and so much better. I want to talk to you today about event marketing and tell you about how this can be the answer to that, of how you can make people feel the essence of your brand, the image you're trying to portray, and, and the attitudes you put in building and creating your company and brand. I had a, a, a friend of mine who owned a bunch of mattress stores, and he came to me and asked for marketing help, and he said that he had this one store in this location that uh, just wasn't up to par with the other stores. It was, it was doing a lot less business, and he couldn't figure out why, and he'd been in that location for four years, and he asked me to take a look at it, and I went in and I saw everything that was going on, and long story short, I could see right away the biggest problem was he was not anchored in the community. Now this particular shop happened to be only a couple blocks away from my office. In fact, I would drive by it every day going to and from work. I gotta admit, I didn't even realize it was there until he asked me to help him with it. Now, it wasn't a bad location, it was part of the strip mall attached to a Target but nothing had been done to make it stand out or make it grab people's attention. So I said, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a gorilla style event. And with that, we're gonna limit the amount of money we spend. We could spend a whole bunch of money, but we wanna keep it tight. We wanna do a low budget, um, but, but make it a great event. So here's some of the things that we did to make this happen is, uh, first of all, we wanted to, to get the word out. Now we knew we had a low budget, so we went and met with some of the media and we put this great plan together. We told them about it. We told them all the fun things that are going to happen. But then, of course, they tried to sell us on, on spending money on media. And we'd already decided we weren't going to do that. And people would say, well, why, why even meet with them? Well, because I wanted to plant the seeds. And I told them that the day that we have this big event, I know we can't afford to do radio uh, remotes or anything like that. But if your stuff falls through at the station, please come to our event. We'd love to have you there. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be great, there's gonna be lots of people involved. Then the next thing I did is me, I took the owner with me and we went around to all the neighboring businesses that were around there and we met with them and we said, hey, we've got this huge event coming up, we want you to be a part of it too. Please put out tables, come out samples, do whatever you want to, but come be a part of this event. Which was neat to have more people involved, but also they told their friends, they told their raving fans, they told their customers about this event so it helped draw more people to it. One of the next things we did after that was decided, okay, here's, we're gonna involve the schools because when you involve schools, most parents feel like, hey, if my kid's involved, I wanna be there, I wanna see it, I wanna support it. So I'll tell you the, the series of events that, that went through this and we'll go through it. First, we started with um, a flag raising ceremony and the national anthem. So we had uh, uh, ROTC from one of the schools, we also had some people from a close by Air Force Base come down and do the flag raising. And then we had uh, the school singing club come over and sing uh, the national anthem. So all their parents came to support, right? So we had quite a few people there. Any passing cars coming by would also join in. Um, we also took the time out along the parking lot and where the cars were passing by and we took mattresses out and we built it like a castle. We used duct tape or whatever. And we made it look cool. So something that would grab your attention driving by we had a big sign put across the front that said, Going Bananas, Crazy Day Sale. Now the reason why we went with that theme is one of his other stores had a, a gorilla costume. So we brought that down. We had somebody in the gorilla costume out waving at traffic, right, by the Going Bananas. So anybody that's driving by sees something's going on. Anybody that's coming into Target to park sees something that, that is happening. So then after a little bit, we had a bananating contest, huge bananating contest with the person in the, in the gorilla suit. Um, it's kind of neat, is about this time of day, all of a sudden in the morning, the radio station, the largest radio station showed up. Remember, we couldn't pay them, but they wanted to be a part and whatever they had canceled. So radio stations come in, do a radio remote, put their big inflatables up, and are making things happen. So that's right as we're doing and helping us announce this bananating contest with the guy in the gorilla suit. Then a little while after that, we had um, the pep squad from the other, one of the other high schools come and we did this huge hula hoop contest right there in the parking lot. So if you can imagine driving by and you see a bunch of people out doing the hula hoop, 
would that grab your attention? Would that make you want to say, hey, what's going on there? And so, so that turned out great. We were moving along. And then about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we had the high school football team from this other high school come over, and we took 65 mattresses out to the parking lot, all wrapped in plastic. And we had people hold them, and we did human dominoes. So people would get up there and hold it, and we'd pass it all the way down. Well, because we knew this was going on, I'd already alerted the media um, about this in press releases and, and in talking to them. So we had three of the local uh, TV stations show up and cover it. We had newspapers show up. We had um, even take video for some of the websites and some of the other news going on in the local area. So we had great coverage from the media. We had lots of people that came out to the parking lot, lots of people driving by saw it. Now, remember, we want to be top of mind. Most of us don't buy a mattress that often, right? It's not like we're buying one every month. So we knew that whatever event we had, we wanted to sell a bunch of mattresses, but we also needed to plant and anchor a seed in people's minds so that when they did need a mattress, they'd know where to come. Well, it worked out great. We doubled our sales that month of what the, the usual uh, amount was that they'd have. Um, and here's the neat part is we never went below that number ever again, the doubled part. That he was in that location for several years after that, and he always kept it above there. Now you say, well, why did one promotion do that? Well, it wasn't just the one promotion. It was the one promotion that made it stick in people's mind. And then we were able to just, just occasionally do little reminders. And people would call him up and text him. Hey, uh, he showed me one text that I thought was so awesome. As the lady said, remember the event we had in your parking lot. That's how she described it. She said, well, I've got two grandkids coming. They need box beans and mattresses. And don't go cheap on me. Here's my credit card number. Let me know when they're ready to pick up. He never got that stuff before. All of a sudden, he started getting stuff like that. He started getting cards from the community for Thanksgiving, for Christmas. Um, and it made it part of the community. So this event, we could have spent, oh, no, we're going to spend a whole bunch of money on whatever, billboards or whatever. It, and it didn't work. But because we took the time to, to involve local people, we took the time to invite people, all of a sudden, people had this great feeling about this location, and their business increased. So as you go out there, here's my challenge to you. As you go out there and plan for events, and I know with some of the things that have happened the last couple of years, people have looked at events differently. But events are still one of the number one ways for you to let people feel who you are, um, to, to create a feeling that they'll remember so that they come back to you. So as you're planning your events, plan to make that emotional connection. What am I going to do to make them feel good? What am I going to do to make them enjoy themselves? What am I going to do to make them remember my business in a positive manner? I guarantee you, you'll reap the rewards, not just for the one event, but ongoing after that. The people will remember you when they need to purchase your product or service. Um, go out and do that. Make events part of what, you're, what your business is about. Make events part of your image, your attitude. I guarantee you, you'll see the results. And this has been our point of view.